The red line here indicates the expenditures within the legacy district. Uh, the large expenditure occurred in 2010 with the purchase of the Six and Jackson property, so the, those expenses were 479000 that year. Uh, since that time, they have uh, been fairly low. There were some expenses in 11 and 12 when there were some structures that were demolished off that property. Uh, and again, you'll see the expenditures start to climb here in 16 up to 169000 That's largely the environmental remediation uh, that is <coughs> funded by the EPA grant that the agency received. <clears throat> Occasionally, the agency uh, needs to borrow money in order to accomplish its goals and objectives, so this is the debt service. The top line here is the Alturas Fund debt service, so there were bonds both for the improvements of the construction of the, of the uh, subdivision as well as purchase of the property for Phase two. That last debt service payment was uh, made in 2015 of 114837 which allowed for the closure of the district in 2015, and so there's no additional, there have been no additional debt service expenses in 2016. Uh, for the legacy fund, the debt service here for the bonds for the purchase of the Six and Jackson property have been about 43000 per year, uh, and that's been fairly continuous uh, over the last several years. <clears throat> Next would be our ending fund balances then, after revenues and expenses. The bottom line here is the general agency fund balance. Uh, it's been about 45000 or so and then ended in 16 at 77875 uh, That fund balance for Alturas had grown quite substantially until that district was closed out and those funds were dispersed back to the taxing district, so that has been zeroed out. And the legacy crossing uh, fund balance has climbed up to about 525000 as of the 2016 fiscal year. And that leads us to our net position with uh, those uh, fund balances as well as other investments in value of land. Uh, the net position of the agency has been growing steadily over the last several years, uh, peaking in 2015 at about $2.3 million. And then with the disbursement of the 900 and, and, uh, or 849000 of the excess revenues in the closure of the Alturas District, leaves us with the ending net position of about $1.3 million uh, for the 16 fiscal year. Um, so, anyhow, that's the end of the annual report. Uh, as required by statute, we did publish notice uh, that the report was available for public review and comment for two weeks prior to presentation to the uh, Urban Renewal Agency Board, uh, and we did receive comments from Ms. Sieber, and those have been incorporated in the document that is in your packet. And then uh, with that, I'd like to present this report for the Council's acceptance. Uh, one thing, Bill, and this has nothing to do with this report, but I think Council might, Ben, we have you here this evening, just take a few minutes and talk about the Southeast Industrial Park that we've been talking about in BURA. Can we do that just a little bit? It has nothing to do with this report, sure. but I'd like to just give councilors kind of an update on where we're what that's looking like for us. So as the Council may be aware, the City received a GEM grant in 2010 to develop a uh, concept plan for the development of a new industrial park. Uh, so the areas that were identified were in the south end of town on the east side of US-95 near the current Fountain Industrial Park. There was a, about a 70-acre study area that was explored, and there were concept designs that were developed for lots, roadways, utility construction, and overall grading and cost estimation for the construction of that, in, of that industrial park. Uh, through the strategic planning process that the agency conducted, we had the joint meeting between the City Council and the Agency Board, and that was a point of discussion and ultimately ended up as a goal uh, within the agency's strategic plan to develop a new district in South Moscow to support commercial industrial development. The agency has just begun that exploration, and so we have looked at the needs, uh, looking at the existing utility services, those areas that currently do not have uh, gravity sanitary sewer services, and uh, what we anticipated for future infrastructure needs, and we've kind of outlined a general area that would uh, include much of the south end of the community. Uh, so we're just starting that process, and we, our next phase will be to have individual meetings with property owners uh, to discuss the district, what it means to them, answer any questions they may have, um, kind of understand their future plans for their property, and help us refine what that ultimate boundary might look like. Uh, the council would, or the uh, board would then work on the preparation and development in conjunction with the city of a new urban rural plan for that area and present that for the council's consideration. Uh, that is something we have kind of targeted for completion by the end of this year, and so I would expect for you to hear more about that in the coming months. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Walter? Which side of 95 are you looking at? Both. 
John, you are part of the URA <clears throat> board. Yes. She's a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, <clears throat> there have been two or three things that we've done that I think are going to help us a lot. Uh, one was uh, the five-year plan that Bill alluded to to kind of keep us uh, focused in a direction that we all agreed would be the direction we would like to go. And then in addition to that, uh, the work that Bill has done as the director on trying to put together the uh, 6th and Jackson corner lot uh, sale and uh, construction of a business and uh, actually the fact that the e uh, Idaho uh, Environmental Protection Agency took the length of time it did to finally clear us uh, so that we could actually move ahead as an organization um, hopefully helped a lot with uh, the Sangria people putting together um, a project that we and they can both agree on. The reason I mentioned Sangria is that um, about two years ago we had a presentation by three different organizations. The, before, the board voted and we opted to take uh, the Sangria proposal and go with it. Uh, and so now they are in the position that they've got to come up with something uh, to move along or if that doesn't happen then we will probably have to go back to the drawing board and uh, other than that we were able to like it was said close out uh, Alturas and we still have six lots out there we're trying to sell and uh, Every time we get kind of close, something happens. But uh, it's being worked on, and uh, having Bill as our director, and uh, having the oversight that we put on ourselves, and the uh, uh, help and the cooperation from the city is moving us along, not as fast like Bill said as we would like, but we're making <clears throat> steps forward and uh, I'm glad to be on the board glad to be help and uh, I think we will eventually uh, make Legacy Crossing um, as successful as Alturas was it took a little while to get Alturas going it's taking a little while and then if we can continue on with the industrial park on either one or both sides <clears throat> of Highway 95, that'll be a big help and what'll be even a bigger help will be getting the four lane from Thorn Creek into Moscow. That appears to be moving along and that'll dovetail real well into what we're doing. Questions for Bill Jan? I just have a statement. Um, I am so impressed with our urban renewal. Um, I, I must say that we have, have you know, a, a good long history, and I, I think we would be remiss if we didn't um, acknowledge some of the groundwork that, that our city supervisor did as the urban renewal, another one of the hats you got to wear all those years, um, but also the efforts that the two of you have done in showing the rest of the state how a how it really works and how it really works well, so I, I applaud you. I'm I'm just so excited. I get to play along the edges um, of this. So so thank you for your efforts. It's really showing everybody else how to do it right. Well, so, with that, you know, you. in addition to that, the the whole board on the URA has yes. made some huge strides over the years for us. Yeah. Other questions for Bill? I, one yeah. question, Bill, if the Sangria uh, proposal does not pan out for financial reasons. Or, uh, there's not a, one of the other two, the Anderson or the Gritman proposal, are not alternates. It would have to go back to you would look at three or however many new proposals would come to the table. We didn't select an alternate. I think the agency would probably go back out to an RFP because it's been so long. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it had been a fairly short time period, it's possible we could utilize that process to go to a second selection. 
Um, but it's been two years since we went through that process, and I, it would be my, my recommendation to the board that we go back through that RFP again. Thank you. Okay, well, I would, if everybody's done, mm -hmm. <coughs> entertain a motion from somebody to accept the Murrah report. Your Honor, I move that we accept the 2016 <coughs> Moscow Urban Renewal Agency annual report. I'll second. Okay, we've got a motion by Gina and a second by John to accept the Murrow 2016 annual report. We'll start to roll with Walter. Aye. 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 Okay, thank you very much, Bill, for that wonderful report.